going to let you guys unmute in 20, actually 100, I think we had 132 people register for this. Um, so just be mindful of that as you, uh, as you manage your, your technology here, which we're all learning to do. Um, and like I said, we are also live on Facebook at the Stronghold Training Facebook. Got a few folks there already, too. So uh, without further ado, let me, let me dive in. We've got a lot to cover today. I know you guys are eager to walk away better than you came in. So I want to go ahead and just dive in and get started, get some of the introduction stuff out of the way so we can kind of get into the tactics of how this works. Let me start with just a brief introduction as to why I do this training. So those of you who aren't familiar with me at Pro or who are watching online, uh, my name is Tom Perrone. I own a, a little consulting firm called Stronghold Training. I've been working with Pinellas Realtor Organization directly for a long time, many years. And uh, so many of you are probably familiar with me that have come through Pro. Um, but I've been coaching and training um, entrepreneurs and realtors for, for many years now. And I sort of stumbled into uh, digital marketing, social media marketing, the same way you probably did as an entrepreneur. I just wanted to grow my business. I was interacting with social media. I was seeing those ads and I was getting drawn in by them. And so I thought, well, oh, this is cool. This is cool how it works. I love going in and filling out content, uh, filling out contact forms, having people send me stuff. I saw how well it was working um, from the consumer end. And I thought I'd love to do this in my business. And so I jumped in and just started doing what a lot of you probably have, have done. I started trying to figure it out on my own, got a little frustrated, a lot frustrated. Uh, and then I ended up spending a ton of money. So over the past three years, I added it up before, before this today, over the past three years, I have spent, and this is not even on my ad budget. This is just on other marketing agencies and marketing people that have worked for me. I have spent over $70,000 in the last two and a half years on just people. Again, that doesn't include my ad budgets, $70,000 for other people to work my ads. And what I learned was that a lot of them, whether it was a big agency, a small agency, freelancers or employees I hired, they didn't know it all. Um, there were things I knew that they didn't know. And I realized this is a complicated world. The biggest takeaway I had, though, is that not every industry is the same when it comes to advertising. And even the people who niche, specialize, say, in real estate or other industries, and they say, this is ours, while they may know a lot more, uh, it's, it's not easy to do. The funny thing is it's actually simple to do. So this is a situation when it comes to Facebook advertising, it's simple but not easy. You can learn the fundamentals of how to do this um, in, you know, eventually, but I think I could, I could show you. We're going to learn a lot today about some of the fundamentals about how to do this. That's actually not the hardest part. The difficulty is in applying the strategy and learning the expensive lesson of how to advertise right. Now, even if you are an advertising genius, you understand you have to spend some money till you finally get it right. I equate it a lot to fishing. I see such similarities between Facebook marketing and fishing. You know, any good fisherman understands that they could, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some fuel. It's going to take some hours. It's going to take a lot of money and bait to finally get that right lure that right fishing hole, that right time. But once they do, they know they can go out there, cast, catch, and go home over and over again. And they like to kind of keep that secret to themselves. So we're going to get into different type of Facebook marketers out there. And I'm going to show you some things that at a minimum, you will walk away from this webinar today or this, this meeting today. At a minimum, you will walk away less likely to make a very expensive mistake. No matter what, you're going to save money today if you're interested in doing this because most of us at some point or another throw up our hands, run out there, and give someone a whole lot of money to do this for us. And, so, and that's fine in certain cases, but I'm going to save you a lot of money in that process no matter what. So that's number one. Number two, some of you, and probably all of you, will walk away understanding just how much of this you should even do. Because the fact of the matter is, is that 
we can talk advertising, we can dive right into the weeds and you can just get overwhelmed. And the truth is, truth is many of you don't need to be even doing that much advertising. So what I think I can really help you with as one entrepreneur to another is to kind of break this down and simplify it so you don't dive into advertising and immediately face overwhelm. Because when we start talking about automation, digital marketing, lead magnets, click funnels, we start talking about these things and you're still trying to put together a Facebook page, it can be overwhelming and you think you need to do a lot more than you do. So we're going to break that down and simplify it. So number one, I'm going to save you a whole lot of money from going out and spending it on someone else. Even if you do hire someone, you'll know more how to hire them and how to monitor them. Number two, I'm going to simplify this. You know, walking away from this, how much advertising you really want to do. So you don't keep thinking I'm missing something. Maybe you're not. And then number three, and this is probably why most of you are here. I'm going to show you each level. So we'll kind of take it easy, a little bit more complex, and then full bore complicated marketing. I'm going to show you a little bit of each one of those and how it works so that you have at least a familiarity with all of that Facebook marketing. Now, from there, you're going to have the choice whether or not you want to dive in a little bit more, but you're going to have been familiar. And I'll leave you with plenty to, to look at um, following this. So I want you to know right away that in any um, training I do, unless you're watching on Facebook Live, if you registered for this with Pinellas Realtor Organization and you're here, every training you get a follow-up email within 48 hours from you. So you're going to get a follow-up email that's going to have uh, these slides attached to it. I'll also have a link so that you can watch this presentation again. So if you miss anything, don't worry. If you, you don't need to be scrambling and writing down the slides. You're going to have all that. So what I do want you to write down is the stuff that really matters to you, the stuff that your to-do list as you go through. I want you to pay close attention to those things and take the notes that matter to you. Don't just try to, to, to hoard all the info because I'm going to send it all to you anyway. So without further ado, I'd like to just kind of dive into this. Now, like I said, this is a Zoom meeting and not a Zoom webinar. So by simply unmuting, we can participate. But instead of having you all unmute and have 100, how many people you got on here now? 81 people all start talking. What I'd like you to do is just kind of make sure we're all here, we're awake, and we're interacting. I'd like you to find that chat feature. And Olivia has already figured out that she can raise her hand. So that's excellent. So if you go to the raise hand feature, if you click raise hand, then I'll call on you um, in a minute. So, and then that will allow you to unmute and ask questions. We'll also take a break during this, so don't worry. If you're uh, pounding coffee like I am and you need to go run, use the restroom, you're scared you're going to miss something, don't worry. We'll take a break at the top of the hour here. So go ahead into the chat, um, if you would, and, and say hi. And if you wouldn't mind, type in there um, what you're hoping to take away from this today. I'd love to just hear. Um, and maybe uh, type in there, what level are you? Now, we're, I'm going to give you – actually, don't answer that yet because I'm going to give you a couple of levels of Facebook marketing. You're going to be able to, to codify yourself. But go ahead, type in there. I love how you guys are already in there saying hi to everyone. Maybe type in there for my benefit. What are you hoping to take away today? What, are you, what would you like to learn today? And for those of you who do not know where the talking head is coming from, my name is Tom Perone, and you should be able to pin my video to the top right. Some of you have already found the feature where you can draw on my slides. Don't do that. <laughs> Some of you said improve the content. It's good. Okay, a couple of you have raised your hands. Um, so if you raised your hand, I think Kat just raised her hand, you can go ahead and uh, unmute and ask your question here at the beginning. All right. Did one of you have a question? If you had a question and it raised your hand, you can unmute and ask that real quick before we dive in any further. Kelly said she wants to learn how to use this so she's not a dinosaur. Dinosaurs are welcome here. I'm sure we've got people here that consider themselves to be dinosaurs and people here that are probably um, advertising every day. We've probably got a whole mix, and I think everybody's going to walk away with some benefits today. We probably even have some people here today that aren't in real estate. We may even have some marketers, marketers that have slipped into this. They usually do. When I run a marketing class, the marketing people show up, 
And so I'll just apologize in advance to all of you marketing agencies who are here hoping to sell your marketing to people. Um, you're probably not going to like me at the end of this because uh, I've got some strong opinions <laughs> about people doing that. So, so, but, um, but I hope you've learned something here too. You're welcome to be here. All right, some of you are doing boosted posts. That's good. We're going to show you the difference between boosted posts and actual ads. Some of you want to save money. All good stuff. Really glad you're all, everything I'm seeing that you guys want to take away, I'm confident you will. Um, now, what you won't get, because I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver, you're not going to get everything there is to know about Facebook advertising here for two reasons. One, I don't know everything that there is to know about Facebook advertising. And two, um, it's just you can't obviously fit that into a two-hour webinar. But what I've learned as an entrepreneur who became a marketing hack trying to figure this out on their own, what I have really learned is that most of us don't have a clear and simple path for wrapping our head around this stuff. And until you kind of wrap your head around Facebook advertising, kind of start at that 30,000 foot level, it's hard to really land the plane without just crashing it. And so, so that's where we're going to start. So really just for almost for the entire first 45 minutes here, maybe even the first hour, we're going to really wrap our head around the approach to Facebook marketing. But don't worry, we're going to be diving into the weeds too. I'm going to have my Facebook ad account up. We're going to be going through clicking this um, from a very tutorial standpoint too. So let me get you to another slide before you get sick of looking at this one. Oh, there we go. So there's really three levels of Facebook marketing, really three levels. And again, this is just what I, this is just my definition. Okay. Three levels. And, and this is pertaining to real estate. So in real estate, I think everybody needs to have a level one presence. So I just call that presence. Level one is social media, Facebook. We could talk a lot about other forms of social media, Instagram, and I don't mind answering those questions at the end. We'll have plenty of time for questions at the end and on the break. But really, we're going to have to focus today because of our amount of time just on Facebook, which if you're in real estate, it's where you need to be anyway. So we'll talk Instagram, LinkedIn, all that stuff maybe a little later. Let's really focus in just on here on Facebook, okay? Most of you probably are already on Facebook. So level one is just having a presence. Level two is what I call engagement. And then level three is what I call advertiser. We're going to unpack each one of these. But here's just an overview. So a presence means, you know, you basically got an account. You might even have a business account. You're on Facebook. Level two is you're on that business account. You're posting content. You're really engaging with people. You're having conversations with people, not just on your personal page, but on a business level. So level one, you're kind of there. It's like, like you've got your yellow page ad, your white page ad. You're just there. Level two is you're there and regularly engaging social media uh, posting content, that type of stuff. And level three is advertiser. Like you have a Facebook ads account and you're in there and you're spending money to make money, things like that. That's a really high level overview of each of the levels. Again, we're going to go into each one in detail, but just from that basic introduction, go ahead and type into the chat what level you believe you're at. Now you might be at level zero. You don't even have a Facebook business page um, yet or you're doing it all through your personal page. That, we'll just call that level zero, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. By the way, there's not, you're not best if you're level three, or you're not there if you're level two or level one. Um, I love how people start going to the fractions. 1.5, that's right. Good, so we got a lot of people here that are already advertising. We've got some that are, that are engaging. That's excellent. A lot of level ones. Barely level ones, level zero, level twos. And what I expect to see is the majority of you are going to be at a level two, at least on the definition I just gave. Yeah, most of you are coming back in the chat, level two, somewhere around there, level 1.75. I'm teaching my son fractions right now, so I'm loving all the fractions. All right, good. So let's start unpacking each of these. And what we're going to do is we're unpacking each of these. I want you to understand what I'm not saying. What I'm not saying is you need to be at level three. Okay? That's not necessary. What you do need to do is choose what you're going to do. So any of you who have attended any of my um, trainings in the past about growing a predictable real estate business, 
And this is what I mean by a predictable real estate business. And we can't predict everything. I mean, who knew 2020 would look like this right now, right? There's obviously limits to our predictability. But what you should understand as an entrepreneur, and I rarely see this in real estate. That's why I say this. What you should understand as a small business owner, you should understand what you do to get what you get. It shouldn't be a constant hustle of trying new stuff, throwing stuff against the wall. Just every day, we don't know where the money's going to come from. Even in real estate, you should know, I do these things, and I've done these things, and when I do these things, I get these things. You should have a plan. You should track your plan. And at first, it's guesswork. But over time, as you track and tweak, you should come up with a kind of a predictable system. And that isn't just in marketing. I'm talking about from the calls you make. I've been tracking my sales calls for years, and I know that today if I make 30 dials, I'm going to have about 10 conversations, and I'm going to set at least two to three appointments. I know that I've been doing that for years, so I don't worry about picking up the phone, and, and, and I don't get that feeling of desperation because I've got the recipe for me. Now, to be honest with you, during COVID-19, 30 dials equals about 25 conversations for me and about 10 appointments. So it's an interesting time. There's actually never been a better time to build bond. Might be harder to close, but advertising is about building bond, and we're going to get into that in a little bit. That's why I wanted to do this class, because there's never been a better time to connect with people. And that's what advertising is all about. It's about connecting with people and building bond, setting up for the close later on. So you don't necessarily need to be level one, level two, or level three, but you do need to choose which one you're going to do, and you do need to have a predictable track and tweak approach to that. And so if you don't think you need to learn level three today, all right, but you do need to walk away understanding at least where you're going to be for the next three to six months. So let's start unpacking level one, presence. So what is level one presence? Level one presence means you have a Facebook business page. Now, this does not mean uh, that you have just a Facebook personal account. And then you got a bunch of friends on there and you call that your business page because you put realtor at the end of it. Um, I have a Facebook personal page and I have a Facebook business page. My Facebook business page is stronghold training. My Facebook personal page, of course, is just my name, Tom Perrone. So a lot of people, especially in real estate, send me personal friend requests, which I'm fine with, by the way, I don't mind that, but I don't do any advertising at all on my personal page. Can you? Yes. Should you in real estate? Absolutely. Because in real estate, it's a very B2C business, business to consumer. You have personal relationships with everyone you work with. So your personal page, even if you try to avoid it, is going to blow up with people connecting with you there. But you have to have a business page also. Think of it as the old-fashioned white page listings. Back in the day, if you had a business, you got listed in the white pages. You might not have had a yellow page ad, that's advertiser, but you had a white page. Why? Because you can do certain things from that business page that you can't do from your personal page. Number one, advertise. You cannot boost posts, advertise, um, target certain people from your personal page. You have to have a business page to do that. And so I would say even if, if you're on Facebook at all, you have to have a Facebook business page. You have to be at level one. At level one, you need to be posting your listings on your business page. It's a, you, when you're doing a listing presentation, your, buy, your sellers are going to expect visibility. What is it we're there to do for them? Well, we're there to give them exposure. We're there I mean, because we have the MLS. We can tell them, you know, we can give you better exposure. We're there doing things like taking pictures. They understand that their future buyers are online looking. So even if you don't get a tremendous amount of engagement from your Facebook listing, if that's not what I'm here – that's not necessarily the most important thing. That's, that's level two or level three. You at least need to show them that you're making them visible. And today, if you're not visible on Facebook, they're going to feel like maybe someone else could have marketed better, even if they're wrong. Because let's face it, most people are probably not going to find their listing on Facebook, but at least it needs to be there. And here's the best thing about it. It allows them to share it. And it allows you to track activity. So if you have a Facebook business page and you post a listing, then your seller can go in there and share that with their friends, and they're going to appreciate you for that. And even better, as people click on that listing, you're going to be able to link that traffic. 
and see that they came from that ad and be able to report that back to your seller, hey, we're getting traction. Nadine is asking, do you need a business name for your business page? Um, you can call it whatever you want, but if your personal page, like my personal page is obviously my personal Facebook page is Tom Perone. So a personal business page could easily be Tom Perone Keller Williams, Tom Perone Realtor. Uh, I, it doesn't really, the name doesn't so much matter, but, but don't make it just the same as your um, personal page. Have something on there, even if it just says comma realtor would be fine. So you have to have, in presence, you have to have that. Okay, you have to at least be posting your listings there. Next, you need to be posting your open houses as events. So every time you have an open house, you're going to create an event on your Facebook page, and you're going to have it there. Why? Is it going to drive a lot of traffic to your event? Possibly not. But once again, so that your sellers can share it. It's a way to provide value and a way to engage um, and have more exposure and connectivity with your sellers. One of the complaints sellers often have is they just feel out of control. And then they go and they see someone online that's doing a bunch of stuff. And again, it may not even be driving traffic, but they see that engagement. They go, how come we're not doing that? It's really easy to create an event under your page for your open houses and allow your sellers to share it and invite people that way. Uh, so Sarah is asking, if I post a listing on my business page and personal page, will my friends get bombarded with m both posts? Um, your friends won't get bombarded if you only post it once. So if you keep sharing it over and over again, that would be bombardment. And so kind of going on that, this is one of those choices we have to make. We have to choose how much we're going to separate both worlds. Personally, if you're my Facebook friend, you'll see Almost never do I post any business stuff on my personal page. And the reason why is I don't really have a whole lot of clients or a whole lot of uh, prospects on my personal Facebook page. If I did, it would probably be different. But I just don't. So I tend to not do that. And real estate, it's just a choice you have to make. The bombarding comes when your Facebook personal page is never used for personal stuff. So you've got some choices to make here, but ultimately – the business page is the primary driver of your connections. But by sharing your personal, your business page post to your personal, here's the thing, Sarah, it links people back to the business page. You don't share posts, the same post in both places. So you wouldn't take, um, say, a post of a listing and share that on your, just your personal page. And then also on your business page, you would share, you would put it on your business page share it from your business page to your personal page so it links always back to your business page. That way it shouldn't be as much of a bombardment. Um, but yeah, they may see it twice if they like both. All right, and last but not least, level one is boost when necessary. Now there's a difference between boosting and advertising. Most of you probably think you're advertising when you're boosting posts. And boosting posts is not equivalent to a Facebook Ad. So let me show you now that we've gotten through level one presence, what we mean by this. And you level twoers, level threeers, just stand by. But I'm going to go ahead here, and I'm going to share. I'm going to stop this share just for a second. I'm going to share my Facebook with you. So you all can see my Facebook there. You're already sending me Facebook friend requests. Appreciate that. So we're going to go to Stronghold Training here. So here's my Facebook business page. You can see you've got reviews, all that stuff. And you can see right now we're Facebook Live. So there I am looking at myself. It's kind of creepy. Facebook Live right there for what we're doing right now. Thanks, Joe. Um, and you can see I've got some posts here. So if I simply post content here, like here I posted, um, I posted a link to um, an, an ebook I wrote um, on, on emotional intelligence. So you see, most of you have seen this on your business page. You've got this little boost post right here. So I can boost this post. What does that mean? What boost post means is I'm going to be able to send this to more people. Okay, I'm going to be able to send this to more people. Now let me, let me real quick, before we get into that, let me real quick dispel a couple of myths, especially for those of you level oneers or level zeros, okay? Let me dispel a couple of very important myths. Myth number one, 
It's all about likes on your business page. Not in 2020, guys. Not in 2020. A long time ago, like five years ago, which is a long time in the world of social media, um, it was all about uh, getting as many likes as possible. And the reason why is if you liked a page, then you saw that content in your news feed. But people started complaining because everybody was marketing to get liked and people liked all these pages and people actually got so sick of seeing stuff in their Facebook uh, news feed, they stopped liking pages because they didn't want to be advertised to. And Facebook, who is all about delivering engagement, driving engagement, realized that people didn't want to see the pages they liked in their news feed because engagement was very low. So what they actually started doing was they changed their algorithm. So now if you like a page, initially you're going to see them in their news feed and your news feed. But if you never engage with that page, it's going to go away unless you go to the top right here to that page and you click like, and then, you know, you've got following and you see here where it says default. Default does not see first. Even my own business page, I did not see the Facebook Live pop up right away. Well, the Live I did, I'm sorry, but I didn't see these other posts. But if I click here, see first, now I will see it in my feed. The default is not see first. Why? Because people complained to Facebook that they didn't like using it anymore. All they had was ads on there, so Facebook changed their algorithm. So getting a whole bunch of likes, guys, does not make people see your page necessarily unless they're engaging with you to the point where if you had, say, 1,000 likes on your page, okay, and you wanted people to see it, and I do this, you actually can boost your post to people who already like your page to get more people to see it. Because if they haven't engaged with it, they're not going to see it. And that's an easy $5 boost. So you can go here and just click boost to people who like your page. I just click boost and to people who like my page. Why would I need to do that? Because they're not going to see it if I don't unless they're engaging with me. And for $5, if you have under 1,000 likes on your page, for $5, to ten dollars, Facebook's going to deliver that to everybody who likes your page. Here's what's great about that. Hear me on this. Even on your personal page, you ever notice how you don't see people that are your friends with on your personal page on your news feed? You know why? Because you're not engaging with them. You see the people you engage with. And you go, well, hold on. I see people that I haven't talked to in a long time. I've been creeping on people that I haven't seen it talk, engage with in a long time. Because you're pausing as you scroll past your news feed for a few seconds on their posts, Facebook is saying that's an engagement, and that's why you're seeing them. So there are people on your personal page that aren't seeing you because they don't pause on your stuff, or they've hidden your stuff in the past, and so Facebook isn't as likely to show it. That's why I tell people you might want to avoid certain posts that will just cause people to hide you because they're not going to see the stuff you want them to see. But if you want everybody who's ever liked your page to see it, then you boost it to people who like your page. Very, very easy. And I know you, a lot of questions are rolling in here. We're going to get to them. So this is an easy way. Again, we're just on level one here, just on level one. So imagine this was a listing. I could boost that listing to people who already like my page. I can also boost to people who like my page and their friends. Now, that's people who are like the people who like my page. This is why I'm not a big fan of running huge get likes campaigns because you actually don't want people to like your page who aren't your ideal prospect. I'm going to say that again. You don't want people to like your page who aren't an ideal prospect. That means the 115 family members that have probably liked my stronghold page, appreciate that, Grandma, but you actually <laughs> – don't unlike me, guys – but you actually – it wouldn't help. Why? Because uh, if, if that's not your ideal prospect, then I can't have this nice little boost to, to, to their friends. But imagine if real estate investors liked my page and I shared it to their friends. You see how that works? You can also, of course, boost the people in your local area. And you can boost to custom audiences. And you can get in there and really get down and dirty with customizing an audience. Now, for real estate, we're extremely limited. There's a, and Facebook is very careful about how well we advertise. But that's just boosting. It's like an ad, 
but it isn't near to the level of actual Facebook ads. Facebook will call it an ad, but the little simple interface they give you for managing your boosted ads um, is not the same. So we can't go too into the weeds in that today, but I wanted to just show you that, you know, I post this little post here, a simple boost, and just get that to at least the people who like your page or maybe um, people within a five mile radius, 10 mile radius of your home or your listing. Very easy to do, and that's really level one, okay? Um, so my question is, based on that, how many of you are level one? How many of you are level one that said you were level two before? Maybe type in the chat, um, is, are you at level one, yes or no? I'm going to go back to my slides here. Good. A lot of you are saying you're level one. That's good. So I don't want to spend any longer on that. Uh, Randy says, is the boost option only available on the business page? I don't see any option on my personal page. Sorry if you addressed that. Yes, Randy. That's why I'm saying you, level one presence is you have to have the Facebook business page. You cannot boost a post without it. Um, that's why also uh, your friends are going to start complaining. that they, You get this, I'm sure, already. Hey, I can't share your post. Why? Well, because you probably have your default privacy settings on your personal page to friends only. So unless you make those posts public, they can't be shared. And you're constantly having to go in and do that. All business pages are public by default. So, I mean, there's no, they're all public. So, so that's why. I've tried boosting, and every time my post has been denied by Facebook, Valerie says. Yep, that is, not, um, that is not unusual because uh, Facebook has a specific terms of service agreement for people doing anything with real estate that has to comply with fair housing. So you need to go into your Facebook business account and, um, and, and approve, accept their terms of service. And uh, most of you are going to have that issue. Uh, Monica asks how to edit the name on your business page. That It's at the settings at the top. You can go in there and do that. Um, and some of these questions um, are going to be things that we'll have to leave for perhaps another time. Um, I will tell you, I'm not here to, to self-promote at all. I, I don't own a marketing company. I'm not here to self-promote. I can't run your Facebook ads for you. I don't own a marketing company. I'm a trainer. Uh, that said, um, if I can, if you will forgive me to do a little self-promotion, I do have an event coming up, a couple of events coming up, but one big one next month on the 20th. You'll get an email about it. Um, says you registered today, I'll make sure you get a link to it, um, where it's a workshop. So we actually, I will go in and do those things with you if you are stuck. So I do have a workshop coming up where you'll be able to have me actually help you with that. Uh, Deb, Deb Jennings is asking, hey, Deb, um, is it $5 per boost? It's as much as you want it to be. It's as low as a dollar, and it's as much as you want it to be. Um, so you choose your budget. Usually, um, uh, I would never, most boosts, uh, you don't want to spend a lot of money on. And, and we're going to get into that as we get into level two. We're going to get into this a little bit more. So that's level one. It's, I'm glad for all these questions. We're probably going to answer a lot of them here as we get into level two and level three. So let's dive into level two. We're just still here, still in the intro. So level two is engagement. So that means you've already done level one. You already have a Facebook business page. You're already posting listings and um, open houses as events and you may boost when necessary. We're gonna unpack that a little bit more, okay? Don't worry, we're not, we're not skipping you by if you're still kind of wanting to unpack level one. Level two is now we begin engaging with people. So in level two, we're, we're posting helpful videos and articles, all right? We're providing tools and resources. We're linking other related pages and events. We're, we're not just working with our our potential prospects and our existing or past customers, but we're also linking with other business pages back and forth. And ideally, you're hosting a group or being active in one. Here's why. Remember how I just told you that all those likes uh, don't help people see your content? Well, unless they're engaging with it, well, that's because Facebook changed their algorithm, as I said. Um, their formula, their fancy formula for how they deliver content. But what Facebook did say is people really engage in groups. As a matter of fact, if you're a part of a group, you ever notice how you see all those posts even when you don't want to? 
That's because Facebook knows that they, they groups make people engage. And again, Facebook is all about keeping you engaging in Facebook. That's why they exist. As long as they can keep you engaging in Facebook, they can sell advertisements. So they're, they're, that's what they're in the business of doing. They've got to keep you engaging and not in going to other platforms like TikTok and other things. So um, I'm going to get all the TikTok questions now. Don't ask me any TikTok questions until the last five minutes. <laughs> so, um, so in a Facebook group, people see that. So if you start a Facebook group, which, by the way, you can link to your page, people engage there. So let me show you what I mean by that. So we're going to come back here to my Facebook account. You can see even right here on my business page groups. This isn't a group that I started under my personal page. This is a group well, I did, but then I connected it to my business page. So my group, groups by this page right here, is called the Stronghold Collaborative. Okay, it's a little tiny group. I just put, it's not even really, to be honest, it's not that active. I keep it there so that I can show you how to do this. Um, for my business, for my training business, it's not necessarily the best move, but for real estate, uh, it has a lot of benefits. So you can see here I'm live in there as well. Now, everybody who's a member of my group saw that. Okay, they're all seeing that stuff and interacting. So Facebook groups are a way to now it's not public, it's private. And the, anything I post in there, they'll see without me having to boost or spend money. Uh, some of you are local folks here in Pinellas are probably all um, in the 100K group, very, very popular group for realtors. You're in there sharing open houses. If not, you should check out the 100K group. You know, people are in there sharing open houses, connecting with other agents, a fantastic, highly interactive group. Um, that's beneficial. It brings collaboration and community. And I can tell you that a private group of your past customers is an excellent way to continue talking to those people without even having to call them. And you then don't have to run ads like you would on your Facebook page. So someone earlier said, well, do we really want um, to be bombarding people? Well, if people feel like they're being bombarded, they're going to stop engaging with you and you're going to drop off anyway. But in your Facebook group, you can deliver value and more personal relationships without it being in your personal page. So it's just kind of a great way to stay in front of people on Facebook. It's not a must-have, but um, it's a great way. Now, to make a group really, really good, you need to have a group that's a specific thing, not just your real estate friends. And it's all about you. You really want a group that's more like um, something that might be more along the lines of something you're more interested in. So let's say you're, you're really interested in home improvements. Um, that's a great way to get people engaged. So you go start a Facebook group on um, home improvements, Tampa, and you engage in, with people there. Again, it's not direct advertisements, but you being the admin of the group and occasionally linking people to your Facebook page have a way to deliver value without bombarding people. Don't use your Facebook group as just another way to bombard the same stuff as your business page. People will just get out of your group. But you use a group that, where people can come together who have shared interests. So it could just be your past clients, as mine is, or it could be something else like gardening in Tampa. Um, it could be something like, um, you know, real estate on the beach. It could be something like, you know, condos in Clearwater. And you have a group there that people interested in condos in Clearwater can come there. And, of course, you're the only realtor in the group. You see how that, – wouldn't that be wonderful? Uh, it's kind of like those of you out there who are big parts of like BNI. When you're the only realtor in a big BNI group, that's wonderful. Well, you can have your own group here, condos in Clearwater, and everyone who's interested in condos in Clearwater come in, and you don't let any other realtors in your group. You can see how the groups can be really cool. But you don't just want to have Tom Perone, you know, ABC Realty as your group necessarily. That's, that's probably not going to drive a lot of community. So that's all I'm going to say about groups right now. Let me go back to our slides here. I know I'm, I'm getting a lot of questions coming in. Uh, Betty's asking, how often do you boost? That really is going to depend. Personally, um, I've got a little formula. I boost anything that gets engagement. All right? It's kind of like the fishing analogy. When the fish is nibbling on a certain bait, even if they don't bite or if they steal a lot of my bait, even if I haven't hooked them yet, I've learned something. The fish like this bait. So I don't go boosting bait I haven't tried already. So I throw stuff out there 
And when I start getting nibbles and bites, then I boost that content. One of the secrets to effective marketing is not thinking you is, is admitting your own ignorance. It's not like selling. Look, you put me in a room of executives that own a that own a business and they're looking for sales training or leadership development training. I feel like I can go in there and confidently close them. That's like my that's my wheelhouse. Okay, that's my hot spot. I'm a I'm 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 a closer in those situations. Marketing is a little different. Marketing is not like sales. You want to be a little bit more humble in your approach. You never know the words you're going to use that are going to catch people. It will surprise you. So I suggest you try a bunch of different stuff. That's how marketing kind of works. You try a bunch of stuff. But once you get a nibble and it looks like something might be working, that's the stuff you want to boost. And so I hope that answers your question. I oftentimes get asked, like, how long do we – like, I'm a big barbecuer. People will say, how long do we cook a pork loin till, until it reaches temperature? Well, how long does that take? Depends on your grill. It's kind of the same way with boosting. How long – when do I boost? How often? When it gets nibbled, how often? Till it stops being eaten. <laughs> um, that's, that's a really basic way of kind of approaching that. That will save you a lot of money. Man, if you've got a bunch of ads out there you're boosting and it's never had a hit to begin with, I just saved you a bunch of money. Don't do that. So that's engagement. Again, we're still on the intro, guys. We're going to unpack this a lot more. We're coming up on unpacking the how-tos coming up. I just want to get to the intro before we take our first break. So that's level two. Now let's look at level three. Advertiser. Advertiser. All right. This means you have a Facebook ads account. You're not just boosting. You've got a Facebook ads account. You are working from targeted lists, not just boosting to people in a five-mile radius. By the way, that's a huge waste of money. <laughs> um, and we've all got to do it sometimes. We've got to just cast that wide net. But you have no idea who's out there just boosting to people in a 20-mile radius. You're going to spend so much money, and you have no idea how much uh, that is. That's like television ads. You know, you know that 3% of the people watching are your customer, but you got to send it to everybody. It's expensive. That's why TV ads stink. Um, uh, targeted lists. You can spend very small amounts of money and engage with the right people only. That's why I love social media advertising. So an advertiser is all about building that list, not just boosting to as many people as possible. That's not a good strategy. It's a good strategy for going broke. Um, retargeting engagement. What's that mean? It means the people who are already liking your stuff, they're coming down a funnel. We keep targeting those people. Guess what? They're more likely to buy, and it's cheaper because there's less of them, and we know who's seeing the ad. It's wonderful. You can see I get a little excited about this. That's why I love Facebook advertising. Advertising. Retargeting. Retargeting. Hey, you watched my video? Here's three more. And guess who sees it? Only the people who saw the first video. Guess what I do? I spend less money. If you're just, here's an ad for everybody. Here's an ad for everybody. Here's an ad for everybody. You're going to spend so much money. And guys, we all learn that lesson the expensive way. I'm here to send, save you money. We learn that lesson the expensive way. You know why? Because we're used to old school advertising. All of us grew up that way. Look, I'm, I'm not the youngest guy. I'm not the oldest guy, okay? I'm only 42. But the fact of the matter is, I used to work for the Yellow Pages. I remember what it was like being in Yellow Page advertising, you know? And it was just, you know, get, his, get on that back cover. You know, people would spend a million dollars. Get on that back cover. Well, not that much. They spend a lot. Get on that back cover. Why? Because we've wanted as, as many people to see this possible. Get on TV. Get on radio. You don't have to do that in social media. You can just send your ads directly to the people who already like you and are interested in you, and you can just keep advertising to those people for pennies on the dollars. It's the best, it's the, it's the best thing out there. Nothing compares. Facebook advertisers also are going to use lead magnets, okay? That's a fancy digital marketing word for bait. Um, it's a way to get people to look, um, to, 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 to give you some of their information, to let you know they're interested. Because the fact of the matter is, is lots of people right now are engaging with my Facebook posts. I mean, I can see it. I'm looking over here. I don't got a lot of people online uh, watching, but I got a few bouncing in and out. I don't know who those people are but I can retarget them. Now that they've clicked on my business page, they viewed my video for three seconds, I can send an ad just to them. Isn't that amazing? That's a lead magnet. They didn't even have to give me their email address. The old school way of doing this was put a contact form, get an email address, and then give them what they want. But people have gotten sick of that. They're sick of the spam. 
So that's why I love social media. That's why I love Facebook is because in Facebook, if they just engage with you, I can retarget the people who engaged. Now, there's still a time and a place to get their email address. And some lead magnets, what I call expensive lead magnets, they have high value. People are willing to give you their email address for those. And I want to get their email address so I can do email marketing. And, and Dale's asking if I do some one-on-one -on -one training. I'll put some stuff here at the end, but primarily I, I engage in events like this. We've got a good event coming up here in a couple months, Dale, um, where, where I'll be able to help you one-on-one. -on -one. But these lead magnets, um, and yes, I, I run the Pro Coach program. So those of you who are a Pinellas Realtor organization, Pro Coach is a coaching program exclusive for you. But I'll tell you more about that at the end. But here today, and I mean this, I'm not here to tell you anything. I just want to help you. So the so lead magnets. Um, have different levels of value. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And so when it comes to getting email addresses and when do I do that, when do I not do that, it all has to do with the value of what you're giving. It's the expense, right? Something more valuable, people are willing to give you more to get more. And, um, but the great thing about social media is they don't have to give me anything. If, they, if I put a video out there and they watch 10 seconds of it, if they watch three seconds of it, if they watch half of it, a quarter of it, two-thirds of it, all of it, Facebook tells me not who they are, but how many people and how much they engage. And I can choose to re-engage people based on those levels, and it is not hard to do. Now, listen to me, level oneers. That's going to be challenging for you at first, but you can do it. So now let me back up. Before we go on our break here, let me back up. As I said, the first hour here was an intro. Let me just back up here a second. Remember, there are three levels. Level one is presence. Just that business page, we're just doing some stuff. Level two is engagement. We're actually engaging with people, boosting some posts. We're trying to get people to interact, maybe through groups. We're kind of on. We're spending deliberate time on social media to connect with people. And level three is ads. We're getting in there. We're spending money. We're doing retargeting. We're doing the work of an advertiser. We're going to unpack all of those more. Now that I've opened these up, go back in again. What level are you? Are you level one? Are you level two? Or are you level three? A lot of you felt you were level two. While you're answering that, here's, here's, here's a word of encouragement. And I'm going to say this, guys. I've been coaching agents for a long time. Like I said, I run the Pro Coach program. I've been doing a lot of real estate training. It doesn't mean I know everything. There's people out there way smarter than me. But I want you to understand something. I've coached really, really successful people. I'm talking people that are right now doing 10 transactions a month. Okay, I'm talking about people that, um, that, that do, you know, bring home 300000 a year in personal revenue from real estate. And lots of people who do six figures who are at level one. So if you're wondering what do I need to do, you don't have to do level three. So should I? Should I? Let me tell you something, guys. This is why I do this class. This is why I do this class twice a year, all right, at Pro for free. Because nothing gets my goat more than these social media advertisers who come into the organization and they whet your appetite with this stuff, and then they go, you need to be at level three, and it's too hard for you, so pay me X number of dollars a month to do it for you. That's all well and good, and I'm not against that form of business at all. There's some of those people are very good at what they do. Some of them aren't, um, but here's what I'm here to do. I want to save you guys a lot of money. You don't have to be level three, even in 2020. There are plenty of people out there. The primary way people make money in real estate is and probably always will be referrals, and strategic partners. And if you've been on any of my other trainings, you know nine times out of 10, I'm actually not even talking about social media advertising. I'm talking about, and I talk a lot about it, but I'm, I'm telling you, you guys, referral selling. Now, social media is a great way to do that, okay? Strategic partner development, social media is a great way to do that. But I'm telling you, open houses, door knocking, FISBO and expired calls, all that stuff historically works. If you're a people person, and you're good at engaging with people. Outside the realm of COVID-19 has some limitations. But if you're good at engaging with people and you're sitting there, like the most entrepreneurs do, and you're going, well, I'm really good at meeting people. And I could make 30, 30 40, 50 phone calls today. And I can run a successful open house. And I'm a great networker. And I could develop strategic partnerships. But I see all the kids these days are on the Facebook. I got to get on the Facebook. And so you spend all those daylight hours burning up trying to figure out how to be a Facebook advertiser Hey, power to you. It's a great skill to have. But if you already have a great way of connecting with people, level one presence is all you need. Now, I'll, I'm here to encourage you to do more than that. I'm all about doing more than that. 
but don't think you're missing the boat or are not going to be successful in real estate if you're not on social media. Like anything, you can't do it all. You can't knock 30 doors a day, make 100 calls, make, make expired calls, paying for ads on Zillow, running realtor.com leads, following up all of, You can't run in open houses, chasing your buyers around, trying to pitch the sellers. You can't be doing all of that. You've got to pick what you're going to do. And we talk about this in my predictable success training. You need to pick just a couple of things and really focus on them. And if you're like, if you're like a lot of people and you're looking at this going, I cannot figure this stuff out. You should not get out of real estate at all. You should focus on what you're good at. Now, I'm going to encourage you to learn these things. I'm going to encourage you to learn them off selling hours, though. Get out there and do what historically works. Does this work? You better believe it, okay? But it isn't so easy that you're not going to spend a lot of time learning it. So if you're level one, again, just want to encourage you. If you're level one, it's fine. It's fine. You need to be level one, though. That I'll say. But you're fine, okay? You can be found on social media. That's good. Level two, certainly encouraged, but I know a lot of people that waste a lot of time in level two and they'd be much better off making phone calls, guys. And we're going to talk about this here. What a level two to me is the black hole. Now, remember at the beginning of this call, most of you said you were level two. And here's the question. And this is the question you all have to answer level two, folks. And I'm doing this as your friend. I'm being your tough love coach right now. It's Coach Tom. I'm not trying to to make you feel embarrassed, but I am here out of love to help you. How many of you level twoers are seeing business from it? I'm not saying it doesn't work. It does work. We're going to talk about how to make it work where you can actually cash some checks from it. But how many of you are spending an hour to maybe six, maybe 10 hours a week in that social media, feeling productive, having conversations, but you have never seen a dime? Go ahead and say, that's you say guilty. Just type guilty. <laughs> type guilty on the comments. Uh, by the way, uh, guilty is charged as well. Uh, like I said, I told you I spent $75,000, over $70,000 just on people to manage my social media for me over the past two and a half years. Uh, if, if I, let's say my time is worth $150 an hour, I don't even want to know what I've spent in time figuring this stuff out. Um, yeah, lots of guilty folks. Good. We can all commiserate together. Um, Millie got a buyer from social media presence. Great. Now, was that from a group, Millie, or did they reach out to you because they saw what you were doing on Facebook? You can unmute if you want to share, Millie. Hello. Yeah, they actually, they reached out to me and they were moving into the area out of state and they Googled, how do you find a good real estate agent? And they started following all my social presence, looking at my website and they reached out to me. Love it. Love it. Now, of course, this doesn't make you feel bad, Millie, but you know, if we go back and say, well, but I had to see, I had to be at the fishing hole for, you know, 40 hours before that happened or 400 hours, you know, it's, but you know, all of us are going to put in the time to get there. It, no, act, I mean, actually, um, I've only been, uh, I've only had a Facebook business for about two, um, just about two years. Um, so I was, I was really, it, it was a great surprise. It was a nice surprise. And I, I haven't put that's a lot excellent. of time into it. Yeah. Yeah, that's excellent. I appreciate that. Thank you for sharing. So we are coming up on our first break. And let me tell you what we've done and where we're going. So what we've done is we've just really done an intro. And the whole goal of this intro, guys, is so that you can wrap your head around what you should be doing. And there's a lot more to say about this. But you need to decide, am I going to be just level one for now and kind of maximize that, get comfortable? Great. Let's get you there. Let's just get you there before these kids come along and start telling you you need to be spending 300 to 1000 Most people are going to ask you for $300 a month to get you to level two. All right. Most companies that, that are advertising to you guys, um, they're going to tell you, you know, we're going to get you likes. We're going to get you engagement. We're going to get you comments. Look at how pretty our posts are. You're going to look all polished and look, we're entrepreneurs. We want to look polished. We want to look bigger than we are. We want to look professional. I'm telling you right now, you don't have to, by the way, you don't have to, but that's besides the point. We all want that. So we go out and we spend the 300 to $1,200 a month most of the time, if we're being honest, just so we can feel good about ourselves. And we're hoping we're going to get somebody and we all justify it the same way. If I get just one person to do a listing with me, it would pay for the whole 90 days. Yeah. 
That's right. And $70,000 later, you're still waiting for that paycheck. Because the fact of the matter is, is that you, you really have to have a predictable success plan in real estate and a predictable success plan in any marketing. And marketing is probably the least productive or least predictable thing you can do sometimes. And so you really want to ask those people, okay, good. I'm paying you for engagement. Um, what is the typical, um, not what have you done before? Don't tell me that atypical story. What is your typical um, experience? And ask them, some of them will do it. Show me your, um, show me your Facebook ads account. How much money you've done in advertising over the past year. Um, you know, they should be able to scroll to the bottom. They can, they can take a screenshot and black out customer data and they can show you how much money they've spent in Facebook ads. They can show you what kind of engagement they've gotten as an average. They can show you those reports and hide customer data. And you need to not um, just hire social media people based on their, their great stories. Look, I've had those clients too. I've coached people that have gone on to, to do incredible things. But what's the average? You know, that's what, that's what really matters. What's, my, what's a typical result? And, you know, the fact of the matter is, is most of us don't do it for that reason. We're hopeful for that. We're optimistic. We do it because we want to look polished. And you can do that on your own. And again, engagement is good for your sellers as a value add for your sellers. But most of us that are spending three hours a day in social media, just on our business, it's making us feel busy. But guys, three hours of phone calls, is an hour of phone calls would probably have netted you a lot more. Um, but once you get the funnel down, you learn how to do this well. Yeah, of course, there's money at the end of this rainbow. But if you're spinning your tires, I would say for now, back off. Uh, from your engagement, uh, just engage with sellers, trickle in some engagement, by all means, I'm going to show you how to make lighter work of that during this. So if you're already spending eight hours a week in engagement, I'm going to show you how to make lighter work of it. Uh, but most of us need, we're on a fence. And we need to kind of maybe back off to level one, focus on more historically reliable things like referral calls, open houses, things like that, strategic partnerships. Um, or we need to dive in deep and we need to start doing some real, real ads. So that was the point of showing you these. The critical thing is, and after this, we're going to take a break. The critical thing is this. In real estate in general, and especially in your marketing and sales, you've got to wake up on Monday morning and know what you're going to do. That means you don't wake up and go, I think I'm going to make a post. I think I'm going to ask people how their weekend was. I think, nope, no way. You'll waste way too much time. You need to know what you're going to do already. You need to have it already built out. You need to know how you're going to do it. I'm going to do these types of posts. I'm going to post videos. I'm going to do this and kind of figure out your frequency. You need to know how much of those things you're going to do. I'm going to do, you know, three videos a week, one Facebook live, one webinar, you know, three blog posts, whatever it is, you come up with that plan in advance and you know what you're hoping to get from that. And then you need to know when you're going to do it. I'm going to have this go out at this time and have this go out at this time. You have to have this if you're level two or greater. And the reason why is if you don't have this, you have no idea how good you're doing. You see, the problem is, is a lot of us just go out there spending a ton of time, a ton of money, or, or mostly just time, and we're out there spinning our wheels on social media. And when we get something, we go, ooh, I caught a fish. Okay, that's great, and that's helpful, but you have no idea what the formula was to get there. I mean, you can go back and look at what you did, but if it's sporadic, you don't know. What you really need to do is just like with you, the rest of your real estate business, you need to come up with a plan. This month, I'm going to do these 10 things on social media, and I'm going to track and tweak. I'm going to look at what I did, what worked, and what didn't. And that's how you actually become a successful Facebook advertiser. It's not from throwing a million things against the wall and seeing if it's going to stick. It might feel like it, but you're actually going to do that proactively and intentionally so you can look back and say, I did these things, I got these things. All right, next month, this is my plan. And it's going to keep you from the entrepreneurial black hole which is just waking up in the morning and feeling busy and spinning tires. Most of us entrepreneurs are very, very capable people that are, we don't have direction. We're just all over the place, learning a bunch of things. We're feeling busy. We got 10 browsers open. Half of you right now are probably doing 30 things at once. We have a real hard time with focus. That's why we like being entrepreneurs because we can run our own day. No one's standing over our shoulder. But we, when it comes to our, all, this is, this is your entire business, whether it's making calls or whatever, We've got to, like any good business does, sit down and make that plan so we can track and tweak. You got to know what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, how much you're going to do it, and when. 
Then at the end of the month or at the end of the week, you look back, you track that, you tweak that, you make your plan for the next week, and you grow better and better. All right, with that in mind, we're going to pause here, okay? I'm going to pause here. We are at the top of the hour. We've got an hour to go. We're at 2.30, so we've got, we've got an, another hour here until 3.30. I'm going to pause now, let you guys run to the restroom, get some fresh coffee. We're going to start getting into the weeds now of advertising, okay? Level one, stick around. It'll be worth it for you. Level two, level three as well. Um, some of you are like, I already knew all this. Stand by. Uh, we're going to get into the weeds now of Facebook advertising. So we're going to take a five-minute break. Um, so on my clock, that'll have us coming back at about 40 after. So let's come back at 40 after. If you have questions for me, you can type them in the chat. I'll be back in 60 seconds to take your questions, um, but then we will come back as a group at 40 after. See you here in a second. All right, let me go through the chat here. And while we're still on break, take, um, take some questions. So Michelle says, where's the best place to find articles to post to Facebook business pages? So Michelle, this is, this is, I'm just gonna qualify this as just being my opinion. Um, I, don't, I don't like uh, the regurgitating of articles. Um, I'm not saying I haven't done it. If I see something really good, I'll do it. Um, but it needs to somehow ideally link back to you. So, um, so in groups, I like it uh, because it can start a conversation. But on Facebook business pages, I don't like it because all it does is take people away from you. Um, the goal is to start a conversation. So, so if you do post something, do it with the intention of starting a conversation. Um, uh, in real estate, um, you're going to want to to look at. Um, I would say, ideally, do stuff that's going to po point back to the value of being an actual realtor. So I would look at the definitely posting legal stuff. Like look at NARs um, stuff, um, share stuff that uh, has to do with uh, the National Association of Realtors, stuff like that. Share fair housing stuff. Share stuff that really is going to let people look at. They're going to come back to you. Be very careful to point people to other pages where they're going to get advertised by other people that aren't you. Um, hopefully that helps. Um, someone's asking if you'll get a recording of this webinar. Yes, you will. If you registered with pro, you will. Um, yes. Some people have some good ideas of other places to get it. 
Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of writing my own content. I just really believe that even just a paragraph or a two sentences um, with a picture is better than most blog articles. Uh, people have a very, very, very – all you have to ask yourself is this. How much reading do you do? Do you only read headlines? Do you only read um, the headings of articles? Well, then so are your readers, right? So um, I suggest that you just take a, a, a great picture and post that and uh, maybe a couple of things there. Um, let the content be right on your Facebook page itself because if someone clicks the article, that is considered an engagement. But again, it's not because of you. Um, it has its point where, again, if people are engaging with your page, they're more likely to see your stuff. So that's why you see a lot of people doing that. But I guess what I'm trying to say is there's limited value. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan, even, even bad uh, content on your own <laughs> is sometimes better. Um, and we're going to get into this in, in here in a little bit as to what, what content I use, I find is best for advertising and real estate specifically. So one of the problems is, is that, you know, we go out there, we start reading some really good stuff on digital marketing and there's a lot of great um, principles out there and things that work, but we really need to look at real estate um, and what's going to work for you. Just because something works doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And that's the trap a lot of us fall into. Yeah, Jennifer says she's been posting articles and, and barely get any bites. So I'm going to show you how to make, and you may already know this, Jennifer. I'm going to show you how to make some lightweight lifting of that. Um, unfortunately, squeaky wheel gets the grease. We do want to be somewhat repetitive in marketing. It's just a proven thing since marketing began that the more often you put a message out there, the better. So, um, you know, I've, I've let my page go cold before and, and things like that. And um, by the way, I don't find, Facebook for my personal business is not necessarily the number one way to, to engage with people, but for a lot of my clients, obviously it is. And so just speaking from them, um, yeah, I'd rather they didn't go cold. It's like, it would be better if I would have spent 10 minutes in the gym every day than, than, than stopping. So if you're still posting articles, that's fine. But if you're like, if you're hammering away, like you're spending a lot of time on it, not getting any bites, then I think you could probably just get away with an article or two a week. Uh, so Debbie's asking the question. That's the question. We're going to get, get into this. Um, what's a good way to advertise to sellers on Facebook? I can get buyers. Yep. Uh, so that is the question. We're going to unpack that here in a minute. Um, and, and a lot of you are eager to, to target sellers on Facebook, as you should. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through. I'm going to show you some of those. I'm going to show you some of those strategies. Um, and, and let me just give you one word of advice as we start to get logged back in here. Um, Agents, please stop thinking of real estate being a buyer's or a seller's game, okay? A lot of you are like, I'm a buyer's agent. I'm a seller's agent. That is like real estate culture gone bad. Um, be an agent. Just be an agent. And, and, and this is what you want to think of. You want to think in three tiers. You want to think, I help buyers, I help sellers, and I help investors. I help buyers, I help sellers, and I help investors. And you go, Tom, I don't know how to work with investors. Tom, I don't know how to work with sellers. I don't care. Find an agent who does. I just, from an outsider looking in, I just don't understand real estate culture here. You guys typically give the biggest referral bonus I've ever seen in any, in any industry I work in. You give 25% for a referral. You don't have to do any of the work. Guys, if you've got sellers calling you and you're only a buyer's agent, and if you've got, um, and you've got uh, investors out there, don't tell them no. Refer them. Say, would you be willing? I, hey, I, I, I'm happy to stay a part of this relationship, but you know, I've got someone on my team, and and you just pass them off to somebody who you really uh, trust can handle them and get your 25%. Um, it's it's crazy to me that that we would ever tell anyone where it's the buyer's agent. Um, but um, but I can understand only working with buyers. I can understand only working with sellers, only working with investors. But you really just need to find that agent that you can work with. And, and hopefully it's an agent who feels the same way about something too. So you find the buyer's agent who doesn't work with sellers, and you're the seller's agent who doesn't work with buyers, and you have a little bit of a strategic partnership. That's, that would be ideal. Um, and, uh, and so just something to keep in mind. All right, let's dive back in. I see a lot of you are coming back now. Um, 
Hey, hopefully this is helping. I haven't lost anybody. We've still got at least 85 people on uh, the Zoom. Appreciate that. And um, a few people on the, on, the, on the live as well. So let me just get a little bit of a strategic partnership. That would be Making a rookie mistake here of not muting my uh, other speaker. All right, here we go. So hopefully you've got it. You wrapped your head around these levels now, and hopefully that's saving you a lot of money. And hopefully it's it's helping your strategy. Even if by way of this webinar, I've had you doing less social media and spending more time on what you're good at. That's actually going to get you more business. That's fine too. You can always come back to this. What you can't do is get those hours back that you spent hunting and pecking, trying to figure out how social media advertising works when you could have just been dialing for dollars. So let's, let's go into this. Here is a marketing principle you all need to understand. And I find very few people understand this. A major marketing principle, okay? Marketing and selling are different worlds. And as realtors, we usually approach marketing like a salesperson, all right? And sales, we understand. I go and I meet someone, I ask questions, I gauge interest, they come back and tell me that they're interested. Um, we set an appointment. I continue to qualify until I close, right? That is a sales process. So what naturally happens is we jump on social media and start doing the same thing. We start pitching early. Hey, guys, you want this? Here's something that can help. Need to buy or sell real estate? Here I am, you know. I've helped a lot of people. Look at all the people I'm helping. See, I'm here. I'm an agent. I'm an agent. I'm an agent. That's not marketing. It actually is hurtful. Can be. Can be. I mean, I guess all exposure can be good exposure. Even infamy can at times be good. But um, it's not marketing, guys. That is sales. And think about it this way. You guys don't want to go to car lots, right, because you know that people are going to try selling to you today but you don't mind going online and shopping for cars. Their marketing works. And when you're ready to sell, you go and engage the seller. You need to think of social media advertising the same way. You need to approach it as a marketer and stop doing it as a salesperson. So the first thing you have to know is where does your marketing process end and your sales process begin? Unfortunately, most of us go wrong in Facebook advertising because we approach Facebook advertising as if we are e-commerce or we approach Facebook advertising as if we're a different industry and we copy people out there and their Facebook marketing, but they have a different sales process. Their end goal is different than ours and it doesn't work. So you have to ask yourself this question and I want you to write down the answer. Where does your sales process begin? I'll help you with that. For 90% of agents, your sales process begins with a consultation. And if it doesn't, it shouldn't. I mean, if it doesn't, it should. A consultation, a seller's consultation, a buyer's consultation, or some sort of consultation. That's where most of your sales processes begin, um, the successful ones. Unfortunately, what I see more of today is it starts with a showing. Now, I'm not going to fight you on that. We can do that in a different, um, in a different uh, a session. But today, more and more, our sales process at the beginning by, by a showing. Either way, where does it begin? Um, does it begin with a sit-down consultation or a phone consultation, or does it begin with a showing? You need to ask yourself. So once you know, let's just say it starts with a consultation. If that's where your sales process begins, I want you to understand that's where your marketing ends. Marketing can continue to build bond with them, continue to engage with people, who come through our sales process and don't buy or sell. It's a great way to continue targeting those people. But our sales process and our marketing process need to be separated. So what we need to understand is that if our marketing process, be, hear me on this, please, please, please hear me. If your marketing, pro, if your sales process begins with a consultation, what do you think the purpose of your sales is, your marketing is? To get a consultation. So why do we ask people? in our marketing, if you're ready to buy or sell, if you're ready to buy or sell, what we want to do is offer the consultation. 
Okay, let me, I'm going I'm to unpack this here for a minute. I think a few of you are going to have the face melting experience and make a whole lot of money because of what I'm about to tell you. Okay, so first you have to understand this. What's this bike doing in front of you? This bike is in front of you to show you a marketing principle. You have got to understand it. It's not a sales principle. It's a marketing principle. And that principle is this. The level of bond I have with someone, that means they know me, they like me, they trust me, they're familiar with me. Okay, the amount of bond I have with someone is directly correlated to how much I can ask from them. Let me give you my favorite illustration for this. Okay, let's say you're single, right? Um, some of you are like, I've been living at home with these people for a long time. That sounds good right now. Don't get excited. Let's just say you're single again, and you're, or you're single, and you're out there, and you're on the market. You know exactly what you're looking for in a significant other, right? You're out there, you're on the prowl, you're excited. And then, boom, you get the perfect one. You're on the online dating, and they send you a lead, right? It's the perfect match. He or she has the look, has the background, has the ex whatever. Just Mr. Mrs. Right, well, hopefully Miss Right. <laughs> but they have the right stuff. You're so excited. You go on that date. You're nervous to screw it up. You go to that consultation. You sit down, and they're perfect. I mean, they don't throw one red flag. Well, what are you going to do? Well, of course, you're going to ask them to marry you on the spot, right? No, of course, you're not going to do that. That would be weird. And you didn't want to do that anyway. Even though they look perfect, you know you've got to build a certain amount of bond before you can have that level of ask. But what could you ask them? You could ask them out on another date. You know, you might ask to hold hands. I'm a little old school. But that's what you do, Right. It's the same in marketing. It's a courtship, okay? It's a courtship. So if your marketing is constantly bombarding people with marriage proposals, now you understand why you're a bad marketer, and I understood when I came to this discovery why I was a bad marketer too. And I have Mr. Frank Kern to thank for exposing this with me. I was in, he's a marketing guru. He's one of the guy who pretty much developed a lot of um, the automated marketing stuff that we've come to know. I was in his inner circle coaching group, and man, I got called out. I was asking every people to, too early. Why? Because I'm a salesperson at heart. And I had to learn to be a marketer. So what is our goal then? All that to say this. Our goal is in marketing to constantly be building bond and knowing based on the bond we have by our tracking what we can ask of those people. So how does that work? Well, first we have to understand in real estate we have three types of prospects. Guys, if you've checked out mentally, I need you to check back in right here. This is going to save you a lot of time and money. Three types of prospects. The first, those who will buy or sell or invest within the next 30 to 60 days. Look, you have a 60-day sales cycle, most of you. Very rarely you meet someone and close them in a month. I have no idea why we try closing people in 30 days. It's just it, scavengers are skinny. Farmers are fat. We want to get fat. We need to plant water and harvest. 30 to 60 days, great when those come in the door, but we can't be shooting for those. That's the first type of prospect. Second type of prospect, those who will buy or sell within the next 90 to 180 days. They're hot. They've thought about this. They got a high level of consideration. They're probably thinking about an agent. They're probably asking questions. They may be attending an open house or two. They're likely to click on ads. Either one of these will click on ads depending on what type of ad you deliver. And then the next one, my favorite group, people who may consider buying or selling after six months. I've got great news for you. That group is probably 90% of the population, even right now in COVID-19. That's 90% of the population. If someone knew they could sell their house and go buy something better, why wouldn't they do it? Now, if I go to somebody and I say, do you want to do it right now? What are they going to say if they're that group, that third group? They're going to say, no, I'm not ready. But what if you could get a better house and get some money? I'm not ready. I, don't, I haven't bonded with that idea enough, and I haven't bonded with you enough to talk about it. But that's 90% of the population. Hear me on this. It's going to pay dividends here in a second. That middle group is a little bit warmer, a little bit more eager, a little bit more willing. So they're easier, quicker to bond with. That first group is hot, all right? That's why we like them. But that first group, probably less than a percent of the population at any given time. All right, maybe 3% of the population is going to buy or sell in the next 30 to 60 days, but let's be honest, it's probably a fraction of a percent, okay? Now, what's the problem with that? I want you to think 
honestly here about your own marketing, okay? Who are you marketing to? Are you marketing to the 30 to 60 days, the 90 to 180? What is your marketing messaging doing? Who are you calling to act? Now, I want you to advertise all three, but I want you right now to become very sober about which of that these three types of groups exist. And what is the one call to action I see in real estate? Everywhere I go, everything I do. When you're ready to buy or sell, here I am. It doesn't work. Why? You're a real estate agent. They already knew that. There's a thousand of you around every corner. They already knew if they're ready to buy or sell, they got to get an agent. Does it work? Sure. We can all get some low-hanging fruit. Of course, you can get some low-hanging fruit. Is it predictable and a good marketing strategy? No. No. It's just not. You know, you can just not. That's just the numbers game. That's the, I'm going to knock on a thousand doors because I'll get one. That's great. And if you have the endurance to sustain that, keep doing it. But I'll, I'll drive by a billboard. If I'm thinking they spend $1,200 a month on this billboard. It says, when you're ready to buy or sell, call me. And I'm just like, this is crazy. It's just crazy. They're marketing to everyone who looks at that goes, that's not me. They look up, they see that marketing message, they go, that's not me. That's not me. So why are we doing it? I'll tell you why we're doing it. Because we want business today. Because we're hungry. We want business today. Guys, you're a real estate agent. It goes without saying if you're ready to buy or sell, they can call you today. Okay? Who will call you today? The people you bonded with. When does the bond begin? Long beforehand those that are six months out. You see what I'm talking about now? What does your social media engagement look like? Who's going to engage? Those people are going to engage. I mean, all of them will engage based on the bait you give them, based on the material you'll give them. But if all you're doing is using social media, hear me on this. If all you're doing is using social media to get low-hanging fruit, don't go beyond level one or level two. It doesn't work. Now, there's some ways it can work on advertising. Let me, let me be clear. There's some, there's some quick hit things you can do, and I'm going to give you those here in a minute. I need to hurry up so I can get that stuff to you. But, but what we really want to do is the patient long-term game. The tor tortoise beats the hare, guys, every single time. Imagine if right now you had a list of 500 people who knew who you were, who knew you were in real estate, who had looked at your stuff and liked it, who trusted your advice and who appreciated the things you said, who you had already helped with something before, and now they decide they're going to list. Who are they going to call? You every single time. You want long-term business? You want your phone to just ring from social media ads? That's all you need. Is there a way to get some of that low-hanging fruit too? Yes, but the number one way to get the low-hanging fruit, phone calls, open houses, the stuff that's always historically worked. You don't have to do it through social media. All right, so hopefully you're not going to say when you're ready to buy or sell anymore. I'd like to see a lot less of that. And what would I like to see? I'd like to see here's help today. Here's help today. That's going to build bond. That's how you appropriately advertise. Let me go through some of that, and I'm going to show you exactly how that works. Well, actually, let me, let me back up. Let me share. I didn't get a chance to do this back when we were on level three, and this is per pertinent to right now. I'm going to go ahead and share my Facebook ads account, one of them. I've got a few. Go back to my Facebook here. So hopefully you can all see my screen. Let me just move this stuff around so I can see what I'm doing here. So here's a Facebook ads manager. So remember before I said some of you are boost in posts and you think you're advertising, but you're actually not. Um, that's because this is what a, an ads account looks like. So if you've got one of these bad boys, then you are in the advertising business. Um, I've got a few of these, and this is, this is one that I like to use for, uh, for things like this. Um, this is my test account. So this is where I'll throw some stuff out. One of the keys to advertising, very important to hear this. We're talking about boosting versus advertising again. I'll be a little scattered in some of this stuff, but I'm going to answer a lot of your questions in the process. A boost, a boost takes something that's already on your page and sends it out to more people. Hear me. I can run an ad and nobody on my page sees it. So I get asked a lot by brokers, how do I not be a competing broker? You know, I'm a broker, but I'm still an agent. And I've got this business page for my brokerage. But if I run ads on there and I get those leads, then my agents feel like I'm stealing from them. Well, yeah, I understand that. So why don't you run those ads and share those leads with people? Well, how do I run my own ads then? 
do I need a separate account? I still look like a competing broker. You can actually run ads that don't go on your Facebook page. You can run ads that just get shown to other people. And this is the best way to do ads. Why would I run an ad if something is already on my Facebook page? I'd rather run an ad that people don't come to what's called organically. Okay, so if someone goes to my page and clicks on something I have, that's called an organic lead. They were already there. Um, I don't want to pay for that. I can just boost that to people that like my page. But if I run just an ad, I can run it to a specific demographic. So I'll give you an example here. So I ran um, a – let me show you a good one here. So I, I had a, a sales training at one time, and I ran a little ad for it. So I'm going to click on the ad. I ran a few ads um, in that campaign. I ran five ads in that campaign. And by the way, pretty much the same ad. It's just a little video ad inviting people to a webinar um, where I tried to close them. And uh, you can see I ran, I ran it on, um, on LinkedIn. I ran it to a local, um, some local sales groups. I ran it to a Tampa audience. I wrote, ran it to people who like my page and their friends. And then my Tampa 25. Um, which is a, a group of, that I'm targeting. And I, I put my budget based on those. You spent 50 on this, 50 on this, 125, 125, 25. And it was just throwing it out there to see what type of engagement I would get. So it just, sometimes I'll do what's called a tow dip. I'll put something in the water, run it for four days and see. But what I was playing with here was not trying to get, actually I could care less if anybody would have responded to these ads. What I was looking for was which audience responded to this message. And once I had an audience that was responding to that message, I actually stopped the campaign, started a new campaign, and ran everything just to that audience. Um, so I, I ended up spending a you know, few bucks, maybe 20, 30 bucks. And then once I started getting some traction, retarget just that audience, pour all the money in there. So the challenge of Facebook advertising, unlike a boost, is you can't really set it and forget it. You've got to be in this account all the time kind of monitoring it, or else things can go crazy. You could spend some money. Not like you would on Google AdWords or anything like that, but you can end up spending some money. And the way it works, just so you understand how to do your own Facebook ads, which is what you're here to do, it's, it's really not that complicated. So we're going to go ahead and do one now. So Facebook advertising is divided. Once you have an ads account, you start a business account, you're going to have to go in as realtors and tell them, accept all their terms of service so they'll let you advertise to real estate. Um, once you go in, you have three levels of your ad. So you've got a campaign. It's where you start. You've got certain choices under campaign. You've got ad sets, which is under campaign. That's why it's tabbed like this. And then you've got the actual ad itself. What's the difference? Well, there's certain choices you have to make in each one. By the way, Facebook likes to change this stuff about every four days. So um, it, it takes a lot to keep up with it. And this is why marketing agencies exist, because they keep up with that stuff. If you're not regularly advertising and you go back into this after not being in it for 60 days, it looks different. Um, so it's, it can be tricky. That's part of the fun. So you hit create, and now I'm going to create a new campaign. So we're going to call this test. All right. So you see, I'm creating a campaign for ads in a special ad category, ads related to credit, employment, or housing. So this is a special ad category if I'm trying to get listings, housing. To help you comply with our advertising policies, some audience selection options are now unavailable to us. Thank you, Facebook, for putting this checkbox in there instead of wrongly shutting down my ads in the past because I've done real estate coaching. Um, so it's helpful, and you've got certain things there. So next, you've got buying type auction. I'm not going to go through all these choices. The defaults are usually fine. But what campaign does is it gives you a budget. So you can set a budget, a budget daily that you spend, and that's only good if you're doing a lifetime. You're, do daily budget if you're planning on running this ad for a long time. Otherwise, what you actually want to do is choose a lifetime budget. That's basically, even if you use it all in a day, it's like, I am not going to spend more than this amount. So we'll just start with $50, all right? Now you've got ad sets and the actual ad itself, okay? And they're just having us name them. There's going to be other choices under that. Now, I am under the quick creation. There's a guided creation that is even easier that you can switch to. And for most of you who are new at this, 
use the guided creation. I actually prefer the guided creation, but if you know what you're doing and you're quick at going in and just pounding out ads, you want to use the other one. And I just wanted to show you what that looks like. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to use the guided creation. So I, I, I went away from quick creation to guided creation, and I'm starting a new campaign. So hopefully I didn't throw you off too much. So first thing we have to do is say, well, we're in a special ads category. And now we're going to choose the type of marketing objective. Now, hear me. Facebook advertisers, this is your most important choice. Most of you are worried about money and what your ad looks like. You need to stop worrying about that right now. This is your most important choice. What's your marketing objection? The reason objective, the reason why is this is where Facebook is going to give you different options. They don't give you every single option for every different type of ad type. For example, we talked before about getting page likes, okay? Um, there's different options for those. We talked before about how you get people to fill out their email address without having to go to another site. Um, that would be lead generation here. We talked about just running videos and doing retargeting. That's video views. So Facebook is actually going to change how they deliver your ad and the options you have with your ad based on the category. If you would like to get into Facebook advertising and you're kind of like toe dipping right now into level three and you're like, this is a lot to learn, here's what you do. You start a Facebook ads account. You go in here. You don't spend any money. You set your budget at zero. And I want you to start an ad for every single category and just click around and learn it. It's the best way. Just go in here, click around and learn it. By the way, I do Facebook advertising on a regular basis. I still go in and click around because they make so many changes. Um, and the worst thing you can do in marketing is stick to the old way. Facebook will come up with something new. And if I can get in front of that before anyone else does, man, I've had some incredible success doing that. A lot of us, even this is why I don't like working with marketing agencies because marketing agencies say, well, you got to have a link that goes to a website and fill out a contact form and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, thank you. Thank you. 2012. That just isn't necessary nor does it work as well today, but they don't know that I can do that right in Facebook. And that's why I fired all the marketing companies I was working with because I learned that they weren't actually up to speed because they're just doing the same thing with everybody. So, and I see some questions coming in. I, I, I'll get through this quickly so I can get to those questions. So most of you um, right away when you're just trying to build bond are going to be doing engagement or video views. Okay. So let's just start one under engagement. So I've selected engagement and then here's my options. All right, I can go for engagement with the post itself, page likes, avoid, or event responses. So if I'm posting an ad now for a listing that's about to have an open house, that would be an event. You can have already created the event if you want, or you can create a fresh event here. If I'm looking for page likes, then you, a naughty realtor, don't be doing that, but this is where you would do it, and I've done those too. If you're looking for post engagement, Remember I told you you had a really good post that was working or you just want to try a post, you would do this here. Now, again, the cool thing about Facebook ads is I don't have to worry about who likes my page. I don't even have to post this on my page. I can, and you probably will, but let's say I just want to post to people in the medical profession. I could run an ad with a picture of someone in the medical profession and run an ad for real estate there, for an open house there, and then I could take that same ad with a different picture and run it to a different demographic and get, run the same post engagement ads to multiple different audiences. What we tend to do, guys, is we tend to try to run big catch-all ads. We spend so much money. You're better off really calling out who you're trying to see here because they're more likely to engage with it. Okay? So we're still in the early phases here of starting it. So this is engagement. We choose what we want. Here's our budget. I'm going to change our budget to a lifetime budget of, I like how they default to $700. Thanks, Facebook. We'll just do 50. Thank you very much. Don't worry about these other details right now. Don't overwhelm yourself with them. The defaults are usually fine when you're new. And we hit continue. Now, if you look over here to the left, remember I told you there's three tiers on running a Facebook ad. There's campaign, which is where you set your budget. Then there's ad set which is where you select your audience. So you can have a campaign with multiple ad sets if you want to get fancy. Most of you are going to have a campaign, one campaign for one ad set for one ad. And that's an easy way to learn. But they split these up because sometimes people want to have campaigns with multiple ads. Okay, and that's getting fancy. 
Your ad set name doesn't really matter. You can customize things where you want. And now this is the one I really want to call your attention to. So we've, all we've done so far is named our campaign and chosen a budget. That's it. Now we're in ad set. Remember, ad set, think of it as audience set. Think of it as audience. Okay, now I'm choosing who I'm going to serve this to. We have two choices. This is your second biggest choice. Your first biggest choice is what type of ad you're going to run. Your second biggest choice or what you're trying to do with that ad. What you're actually, you have to think, what am I trying to do? We also did that under campaign. Your second biggest choice is who do I want to serve it to? I can create an audience. And this is what you're used to with your boosting, right? I can go in and create an audience. We'll call this test audience. I can go in and create new, create a custom audience. Um, and I can go down here and create an audience with these things, where they live, what their age is, um, gender. Um, it has to be all, a lot of these are fixed when you're in real estate. Um, you, in a real estate ad, they don't allow you to go after people um, to target demographics because of fair housing, you understand? So there's some limitations in Facebook ads with demographics. Um, but you can go in here and change up and just advertise to people who live in Largo, for example, um, over the age of, um, I can't do ages in real estate, but I could do people who live in, tar in Largo who like Walmart, okay? If I wanted to, to do it that way, I could do that. The problem is, is that that's very, very wide. It's a top of the funnel thing. We're going to spend a lot of money to get our actual people. So what I prefer, and this is what I'm so glad you're here to see, what I prefer is you use an audience you've used in the past, but most importantly, this is where you do your retargeting. So I can go in here and create a new custom audience. You see what it says? Reach people who, you've already, who have already interacted with your business people I've bonded with in the past. Hear me, I can only advertise if I want to people I've, who have engaged with my stuff in the past. Why would I do that? Because if I just do a broad net over and over and over again, I spend a lot of money. But if I've gotten people to engage with me and I just target that smaller group, I spend less money for people who are already bonded. What happens? Bond goes up. And what can I do with those specific people that I couldn't do with the other people? I can ask for more. So you go, well, when do I ask? How do I know when I have bond with people? Right here. Your retargeted ads, you're going to have more ask. So when do I ask people if they want a consultation? When they've already engaged with me, say, three times before, I can go in and do an ad now with a custom audience. Here's my custom audience selections. People who have, let's say, looked at my videos. I can go say, oh, let's see, people who have watched 50% of my videos. I can even choose the videos. I'm on my church's site now. I run their social media, go to my business here. So I can say, oh, here's a realtor one. Here's a realtor one. Here's a realtor one. All right, I'm going to confirm that. So now I'm just marketing to people who have watched 50% of things to realtors in the past year. And we'll call this engaged realtors. And I'll create that audience. It's going to be a much smaller audience than just people who live in Largo. And now I can run an ad just to them. Well, I've got bond with them already. So my ask is going to be a lot higher. And guess what? I'll probably spend less than 50 bucks on this and engage with all of them. Isn't that excellent? Great way to get advertising done. This is what people are doing to you all the time. Now, let's say you're not there yet. We don't have any engagement. We're just going to create a new audience. Well, two ways to do this. Number one way to do this is you go in and you create a demographic and you try to find that person you're looking for. That's okay to spend some money, and some of us have to start there and spend some money until we have an engaged list. The number two way to do it is to take a spreadsheet you already have. So I've got a list right now of over 600 people who have downloaded stuff from my website, okay? And I can go in and create an audience, X out of this one, go in and create a custom audience, create new custom audience, and look here. I can go offline activity or my favorite, customer list. So now I click customer list, and it wants me to upload a list. All those people that you've engaged with on your website, your, through your brokerage sites and stuff like that, and you've got that spreadsheet with their names and stuff, I can upload them in Facebook. You already have bond with them. 
and Facebook will look for them and find them. Facebook can find anybody. It even has face recognition. It's scary. Facebook will go and find them. Now I'm targeting 600 people. Here's the big aha moment for a lot of you level two people. All that money you were spending to try to get somebody cold to warm, why? You're going to spend $100 maybe to get a few of those people engaged. Well, I'm not saying don't do it. But if you've already got a list of people, of say 500 people, you upload them. Here's the big reason why. Facebook limits how many people you can do a boost at. I mean, it gives you a minimum of people you have to reach, a minimum audience size for boosted ads and, um, and, and, and demographic ads. What I mean by that is if I wanted to go advertise to people in Largo, it's not going to let me run an ad until I have at least 10,000 potential people there. And that costs a lot of money to reach all 10,000. I'll probably never see them all. But, but if I have a list of 600 people and I upload that list, Facebook will let me just market to them. Then $10, I'll probably reach them all. You see why I love social media advertising? Because you guys probably already have lists you can be marketing to, people you're already engaged with, and you can just start with them and spend a few dollars. And you don't have to go to this, like, boosting a post to 10,000 people, spending all this money, trying to get somebody to like it, and hopefully get business. That's like sitting on a car lot, waiting for someone to show up, and when they finally do, you ask if they want to buy a car today. You're going to get someone to buy a car eventually, but this is the way to go. And, again, it's very simple. You just create an ad. You come in here, and you upload a list. I know you guys are going to have questions on how to do this. I'm just saying this is beyond you. This is level three stuff. But I wanted some of you to understand why level three works well and where the money saving is there. Uh, so some of you hopefully are rubbing your grubby hands together. So now, of course, we schedule those ads, and then we click continue. I'm going to get out of the weeds here now, kind of get back to some general questions. Now we're at 315. Then we got to go in and create our actual ads. So you can create an ad here. You can use an existing post you've had somewhere else. You can select that. Um, they even have some stuff they'll give you. Um, you can use videos. You can advertise to people who are watching other videos. All the stuff you see, you choose where your ad is going to show up, and, um, and then you launch your ad. Um, you'll see here I've got Facebook Pixel. That way when people click my ad and they go anywhere, um, I've got that on my website so I know what ad they came from to my website, et cetera. A lot we can talk about there, and in my, um, in my workshops, we get heavy duty into that stuff, but, um, and we actually do it together. So you sit there with your computer, and we go through it, and we make those things together. But I wanted to show you that is how Facebook advertising works, and you have now learned even more which category of people you are in. And some of you just learned that you're happy staying at level two, and that's perfectly fine. Let me run through this slide real quick, and we're going to get to some t questions. You have, do not start a Facebook ads account until you know your target audience demographic. Who are you marketing to? All right, even though Facebook is going to limit your ability to target them, you need to know who you're trying to target. It can't just be anybody to click on your ad because I can serve lots of stuff that the wrong people click on, and that doesn't tell me I'm doing well, right? Just because my grandma clicks on every ad, that isn't helping, okay? We have to know the content those people want to see, so before you begin advertising, you start thinking, who do I want to see it? Potential seller, okay? $200,000 home. Okay, I can't advertise direct to those people, but what type of content do those people look for? Now I can reach them um, with Facebook demographics because I can look at their behavior and their ads. And it's a, it's a selection there under audience. You can say people with certain behaviors. Um, you want to have more value for them when they click. So the goal here is building bonds, not just trying to catch fish. We actually want to build bonds. So what type of stuff are we putting out there? We're giving them the content they want to see. We're actually using this trick, right? We're showing people that we actually have value so that they keep engaging with us. It works really well. And that builds bond, and then our ask for the consultation works later. We do want to have an offer we can make, and our offer is going to be for a consultation. And we do want to be letting people know that if you want to learn more, go here. But the whole point of providing this value is not to get them to go there. We make the bond the main thing, the value the main thing, but of course we always say, hey, if I can ever be of direct help to you, click here. And we want to know how our demographic is reached. If our demographic is reached best by email or webinars, then don't spend a whole lot of money on Facebook doing anything other than getting them to give you their email or to subscribe to a webinar. 
But if they're reached best by a phone call, then we want to be reaching them till they finally make a phone call to us. If they're reached best by e-commerce, meaning they're going to click and buy, then we want to get them to click and buy. It's very, very important you understand that bridge between your marketing and your sales process. Most of you watching right now, your sales process being real estate starts with a consultation. Well, how are people going to schedule a consultation with you? Well, they're either going to email you and ask. They're going to call you and ask. People are afraid to pick up the phone and call a stranger, even one they may have some bond with. Matter of fact, their entire relationship with you has been electronic so far. So you know the best thing to do? Have them schedule a phone consultation. So your call to action is not, call me if you want a phone consultation. And I can't even track people who said maybe to that. Your call to action is, click here to schedule a 15-minute phone consultation with me. You're going to see a lot of people that click and don't schedule but you can retarget those people. Many are going to click. You can share your calendar programs like Calendly. There's a lot of automated scheduling programs right there. They can go in and schedule and times you pre blocked 15 minute consultations or hour long consultations with you. And they're going to feel free to do that because it feels very safe. People don't want to put their phone number and email address in, but they're happy to go schedule a time in which they're going to just have a phone call with you. You see how this begins to work best, but you have to be thinking like a marketer and stop thinking like in, inside your sales process. You have to know how your sales process works. And what I just gave you is how most of you should be doing it. Then we need to be prepared to nurture them. Most of us run ads like that and we see what we get and then we stop and we start over. We stop and we start over. Very, very expensive and a big waste of time. Remember, our goal is to build bond. And unfortunately, most of us are looking at the gold at the end of the rainbow and not looking at the rainbow. So what I mean is you could run three ads today and get no clicks um, for people to schedule with you, and you're probably going to be thinking like a salesperson and think that was a fail. It's not a fail, guys. What we're looking for is to build bond. Engagement is a win. So if you run a video, a four-minute video, and people watch two minutes of that, and it was on home improvements, and during the video you're saying things like, hey, if you're looking to sell your home, you need to be improving it now. Stay tuned. I'm going to tell you what to do, home improvements that are best for people who are looking to sell their home in the next six months. And I have a video I'm going to send you that talks about marketing messaging. At the very beginning of the video I say, hey, if you're looking to sell your home this year, you're going to need to do some improvements. Here's the top three improvements. Well, who do you think is going to watch that video? Who's going to watch that video all the way to the end? I don't, and, guys, the video does not have to be Hollywood-made. They're there for the content, and as long as you're giving them that content, they're going to stay engaged. And primarily the people that are going to stay engaged are the people who you're helping, which means the people you're bonded with, those are the people you're going to retarget with those ads saying, hey, here's my consultation. Why don't we have a consultation? And only those people are going to see that ad so that you're not pitching too early to other people. And then the rest of the people who didn't watch it all or only watched some of it, Keep nurturing them by just targeting them with other videos and other articles. And that's how this works really well. But we're driving the right people to a destination, and we plan it all in advance. Here's a couple resources you need to have. I am a horrible graphic artist, um, so I use Snappa. Snappa is $15 a month. Um, I have it here to show you, but we're short on time, so I'm not going to show you Snappa right now. But Snappa goes in. You just click Facebook post. It automatically sizes it. has all of your um, free uh, pictures there, and it's really easy to just get those pictures for your Facebook post there. You don't have to be a graphic artist at all. So Snappa is a lifesaver for me. Uh, Buffer. Buffer is $15 a month, and it is the cheapest way to load up your social media posts. So I told you earlier, some of you engagement people, you're spending all that time every day coming up with your Facebook posts, stop doing it. Beginning of the month, if you're just level two engagement, beginning of the month, you sit down for one day, and you're going to get all your articles together. You're going to do all your little pictures. You're going to get everything that you want to do except for, you know, listings that come up and stuff like that. But all your engagement stuff that you want to do that you're probably paying people or will pay people $300 a month to run for you, you don't need to do it. This is what they do. They open up a Buffer account for $15 and a Snappa account for $15. They go in and they spend one afternoon making 30 posts, take you about an afternoon, finding that stuff. They load it up in Buffer, and Buffer will just post it along a calendar for you. 
By the way, you don't even have to spend, if you're only advertising on Facebook, don't even get the Buffer account. Facebook does it, and I'll show you how here in a second. Um, you need to have a YouTube account because when you start getting um, into videos you want to share, you don't want to share them from Facebook. So you want to upload the videos you upload to Facebook, upload them to YouTube as well, just so you have a link to share. You're going to need a Facebook business and ads account. You're going to need a Facebook business page. And then for the videos, you're going to want an iPhone 10 or above or a quality phone with a camera. I shoot most of my stuff on my phone perfectly fine for social media. You don't need to buy expensive gear. Um, maybe one light that has some white light for when you shoot stuff. But, guys, quality is not what keeps them. It's content. You know, don't look like, a, a, you, know, don't look like you just woke up in the morning. But people worry so much about how their videos look. People don't care about that on social media. You just need to have great content really fast, right up front, calling out your demographic. And that works really well. Um, I got a bunch of stuff on social media that can help you. That's where to get it. Um, man, I feel like we could have talked about a thousand other things. I'm hoping you've all been helped. Let's spend this rest of this time, and I'm happy to stay late, but let's stay the rest of this, let's t spend the rest of this time now getting into um, some, uh, some questions. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the chat, and you can also raise your hand and, and, and unmute after I call on you. So some of you are asking, again, how to advertise to sellers. So the way we advertise to a seller is just like the way we advertise to a buyer. We've got to think like them. So you think like a seller. What is a seller interested in? A seller is interested in home improvement. A seller is interested in home inspection. A seller is interested in what a sales process looks like as they sell their home. We take that content and we make a video or we write a blog and we post it and we say, hey, if you're looking to sell your home in the next six months to a year, here's three things you need to know today. Then we go on our Facebook and we take, anybody, we take a list of anybody who's ever engaged with you, you before and we're going to target those people as one ad. Then we're going to take people who are in a location that you want, who like the Home Depot, who like home improvements, you're going to type in behaviors that those people would have that tries to peg them as a potential prospect, and you're going to send that out. Until you have a targeted list, you've got to start at the top of the funnel. Well, how do we know who's a seller or not? Well, you technically don't, but the people who watch that video for more than two minutes or three minutes, that's why I don't believe in 30-second videos. It doesn't work. It doesn't let us know who is a real engagement. They might have watched – someone might watch a 30-second video, and excuse me for this, but people might watch a 30-second video because you're pretty. You know what I mean? Because they're curious. So if someone watches – that doesn't tell me they're a, um, a, uh, an actual prospect. But if someone sits, no matter how pretty you are, if they watch a video for you talking about home improvements for three minutes, they're, they're a target. So I'm going to run that video, and then my sellers are going to be the people who watch that for three minutes. And then I'm going to retarget them with similar stuff until they call me, until they schedule the appointment. And that call to action will get louder and louder as I go more and more targeting those people. So Demetria says, how do you determine which objective to choose for your boosted post or ad? Um, trial by error. So what I do is I think to myself, who am I trying to target and what do they like? And then I put that information out there, and whatever gets the engagement, I boost. So once I get a little bit of engagement, I boost that um, first. All right, I know some of you do have to bounce off. Let me go through some more questions. And a list on Excel, okay. Um, so Facebook won't let you upload a list in Excel, so you just open up that Excel and resave it as a .csv file, and you can upload a .csv they'll sort out the formatting at that point in time, and they'll let you fix it in there. Um, can you show a basic new audience list like sellers? Um, so any seller list, Chris, that you have, um, um, a basic new audience list like sellers, what would that look like? Um, so you can download those lists. So, so, for example, a lot of you are getting expired you're going out there and you're finding people who have expired ads, stuff like that. Um, once you have their names, uh, their, their contact info, if you have their phone numbers, their email addresses, things like that, um, just a list of people like that. Um, oh, just saying how to find those people. Um, yeah, the best way to build that, again, it's, 
you really, I'm going to kind of leave that a little bit up to you, but you're basically just going to choose based on area and, um, and activity or behaviors that you think they like. Unfortunately, in real estate, this is the bad news, guys. In real estate, Facebook really limits how much you can customize your demographics of your audience. They are scared to death of fair housing violations, so there's not much you can do. The best thing for you to do is keep all those people who have been to your open houses, keep their information. Um, get information from your friends. Hey, can I get the email addresses of people who attended your open houses? Um, anyone who's engaged with your stuff, keep retargeting them. The best, initially, you're running some just generic ads that a seller would watch. Hear me on this. Initially, you're just going to be write, running generic ads to a specific location that only sellers would watch and then retargeting them. You've got to kind of start top of the funnel unless you already have a spreadsheet. The reason where most of us go wrong, people go wrong, is because they don't keep retargeting those people, and that's the problem. Um, how do you build followers on a business page? Do they have to like personal page first? Nope. Um, and again, my goal is not to have a bunch of people on my business page. My goal is to run ads that are engaged with. They don't, I don't even have to like my personal page. As a matter of fact, I don't care. Most of my engagement with audience isn't on my Facebook page. Um, but yeah, my raving fans might be there. But what I do is just run ads and retarget people who have liked those ads. I don't even um, care if they like my Facebook page. It does me no good if they like my Facebook page. I want them to schedule an appointment. All right, just going through some more of your questions. If anyone would like to unmute and ask a question, you can do that too as our audience starts to wind down here. All right, just going through some more of your questions. I know I missed a bunch back a while back there. So Sarah asked, do you take people who were at your open house and search them on Facebook? So you don't have to search for them on Facebook, Sarah. Um, uh, as long as you have their name and email address, Facebook will find them for you. So you just upload that .csv file into your ad and just create a list called open house attendees, and Facebook will go and find those people for you. So you don't have to stalk them. If you do, it doesn't do you any good anyway. Um, so that's, you can't actually select specific profiles to, um, to advertise to. So that's all you have to do. Uh, so Dale asked, will I be sending stuff for my, on my upcoming workshop? Uh, yes. So again, I'm here to just help you guys. I don't want to peddle my services, but I will tell you, for those of you who would like to like sit down and just do this together. So I've got an upcoming workshop. It's, um, it's pretty long. It's, quite, it's a few hours where um, instead of me just uh, talking at you with this stuff, we actually sit down and go through it together. You're going to do all the clicking. You're going you're to create ads together. So you'll leave that workshop with your ads, your business page built, your social media already created. You're going to go through your buffer account, or we'll use Facebook publishing tools. Um, and, um, and that's a paid workshop, but you'll walk away from there with all, with all of this stuff built. So you've done it with my help. Um, Catherine's asking how much. That's coming, Catherine. That's in your follow-up email. Um, but uh, but it's, it's well worth it, I, I, I promise. So um, <laughs> heard that one before, right? It's not expensive. Heard that too. Uh, but uh, I'm going to send that out to you guys, and uh, that's coming up real soon. Um, I've got a couple of them coming up, and so you'll be able to register for that, spend a few bucks, come in, and we'll do this together. And um, and so since you registered for this, you'll get those emails coming up. And, um, and, and also you'll get these slides, a recording of this. So you can go try it on your own. But if you really want more of that workshop, originally I was going to do that workshop, just so you know. The reason I'm not giving you the money is originally um, I, we were going to do that workshop um, in person um, at Pro. Uh, but obviously that can't happen right now. So I'm going to be doing them online. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out exact group size to be able to make that work well. And so we may end up having a few of them for level one people, level two people, level three people. Um, but we're going we're gonna to have that. It'll be affordable. I'm talking, these things are, are not more than, um, than what's worth the time. And it's, it's a half day event. So we get through it. Um, so, so that, so that I'm hoping that you'll, you'll all get invited to that, but I hope you took something away today. I know this can be overwhelming. I really hope you took something away that these hours were put to good use, either because you're going to actually not waste as much time on social media stuff as you were originally doing, or because we've sharpened in what you are doing. I know we got into the weeds, and that can be overwhelming, as some of you are saying. Um, 
And I want to unpack that more. This was my top of the funnel webinar. Um, so now you've got the different levels. So if you'd like to reach out to me, you see you can schedule a call with me here. Go to strongholdtraining.com slash schedule. You can schedule a call with me and let me know, hey, I'm level one, I want some help. Um, you know, let me know. I've also got trainings um, on predictable success. They're just 40 bucks, I believe, that you can go in there and do some real estate training if you'd like to go through. It's not so much on marketing, but kind of just developing your overall sales plan. Um, a lot of stuff, other stuff out there. I've got free stuff out there on marketing messages. If you just go to my Facebook, my YouTube, I've got free stuff out there on how to craft messages, a lot of other material. Um, but I hope that you all felt the time was worthwhile. Really appreciate you guys. Um, I'll stay on for some last-minute questions here. Uh, I've seen this one before. Um, can, I, can I add my LinkedIn and Instagram accounts to my business manager? LinkedIn, no. Facebook and LinkedIn aren't friends. Uh, Instagram, yes. Um, be careful with the Instagram, guys, uh, on, on trying to build a bond. It, it can work. I'm not saying it doesn't, but it's best for people who have already liked you somewhere else. So um, don't, I wouldn't use uh, Instagram to bring a cold audience warm. I would use Instagram to continue to engage with an audience who already likes you. Um, and usually a little younger crowd, good for buyers, trying to convert renters to buyers. Instagram's good for that. But for most of you looking for sellers, stick with Facebook. Um, appreciate all the good comments. A lot of people seem like they were helped. I really wanted to make sure I helped everybody, no matter if you were level one, two, or three. Um, I know I overwhelm a few. A lot of you want to know what my workshops cost. That's good. Uh, this one costs nothing. <laughs> so I'm just going to scroll through, seeing if I missed any questions, and then we'll call it a day. Let's see. Some of you are posting a lot of good help for everybody. So hopefully you guys saw that. Monica still having trouble changing her name on her business page. Send me an email, Monica. My email, by the way, it's not here. It's just Tom, T-H-O-M, at strongholdtraining.com. Oh, yeah, Carolyn still wants to know about TikTok. So, guys, I'm just going to tell you right now I'm not a fan of TikTok. Uh, TikTok is, is – Chinese Facebook, meaning I don't mean that in a, in a negative way. I mean, it's actually owned by, it's, it's actually a China based thing. Facebook is a U.S. based thing. So uh, China really their, their web um, is, is where all of that is housed. Um, and, and so I personally just um, prefer Facebook because Facebook is a little, as you've seen, it's governed a little bit more by the Senate. They have to apply to, there's laws that apply to them. So I don't have as much remediation um, or um, things through TikTok as I do through Facebook. So I personally also, Facebook is primarily used by people under the age of 16 right now. It's just where you make silly videos and stuff like that. Uh, there are marketers there because um, people that only focus on social media marketing are on every platform. You know, the Gary V's of the world are there because people, anybody will watch him because he's talking about how to advertise on TikTok. I don't think your buyers and sellers are, are looking for real estate on TikTok. Um, it's kind of like Pinterest. You will do better on Pinterest than TikTok because you can talk about home decorating on Pinterest. So I'd rather you were on Pinterest. But what do you need to be on? You need to be on Facebook. Uh, Facebook is the place for, where people will watch eight-minute videos and click a link to schedule with you. That's going to happen primarily on Facebook. So, you know, going everywhere else, I think if you really get into that, then you probably should be opening up your own marketing agency and maybe not be uh, just doing this. Um, that's just my opinion, though, guys. My opinions are free. <laughs> Hopefully that's helpful. Looks like most of you are starting to sign off now. We've still got about 50 people on. If you've got a last-minute question, get it in quick. I'd like to sign off by 345. Uh, Checking on the Facebook Live. If you have any questions, you can put those there too. Yeah, someone said TikTok taps into all your privacy. Yeah, I'm, again, I'm not a fan of TikTok. Plus, I just find TikTok, and personally, I find Instagram to be a black hole. Look, I'm as prone to staring and scrolling like you guys are. And I look at my phone every week to see how much time I spent in each app. And when I had Instagram on my phone, I spent a lot of time in it. Now, I've had tremendous engagement on Instagram. Don't get me wrong. But how I convert people from Instagram to, a, to my consulting company as opposed to how I convert someone from Facebook is different because they're different buyers. Remember I said at the beginning, you've got to understand your buyer. You've got to understand your prospect, what they're looking for. 
different types of engagement in those things. So now I'm figuring out how I'm going to run Facebook ads and how I'm going to run Instagram ads. If you haven't mastered your Facebook campaigns, stay off the other ones. Now, listen, I've got clients that kill it on Instagram converting renters to buyers, but they're also not on Facebook. They're, they're just doing it there. So I think most of you probably just need to stay at one. Kat says she works with a lot of expired, hard to find phone numbers, let alone an email. Does Facebook only look for those from a list name of email. Yeah. Yeah. So expired is going to be a little tough uh, to, until you have their information. Um, so here's how you do that, Kat. You're going to run a Facebook video for people who have had listings expire, and you're going to want to run those in groups. So go find um, groups of people who have listed their home or go find local buyer seller groups or just honestly boost an ad. And what you want to do when you're boosting an ad that you want expires to see is you want to be really polarized in your message. What I mean is your ad wants to say, has your listing expired? Question mark, question mark. You must hear this. No one's going to click on that ad except primarily those people. So you're not going to spend as much money and you run a video engagement ad. Facebook is only going to charge you if people engage. So you want to run an ad that's extremely polarizing. It's only people who would engage with that. We want everyone else to actually go fly a kite. So you would say, has your listing expired? You must see this. Run that to everybody in Bel Air or wherever you're marketing to. Um, run that, spend 100 bucks. run that to them. And the people who engage with that ad for more than two, a video of you talking, giving three or four helpful pointers, of what they should do, not just selling yourself, but giving them helpful pointers. Uh, call to action can be, you know, click the link below if you want to hear more, and that's it. Anyone who engages with that for three or four minutes, they're a prospect. So you're going to keep retargeting those people they are likely expired. All right, good question here. I'd like to incorporate my personal work with animals. Should that be on your page, on your business page? Can you add other interests? Absolutely. Guys, you know, don't just look like, you know, one of the biggest mistakes people make, I hope some of you stayed on for these bonus questions. They're fantastic. Some of you people um, out there that are, are trying to look like, and I'm guilty, trying to look like every other agent, trying to look polished, you're actually fading into the background by doing that. Be you. Customize your flavor. You know why we don't do that? We're worried we're going to make other people go away. Well, you are. But you actually, it's called polarizing. You're actually going to attract people to you who want to work with you. So if you're big into animals, you should be the pet-loving agent on your business page. By the way, you can have more than one business page. But you should be the, 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 the agent that's all about that. Niche away. By the way, just because I'm not the pet-loving seller doesn't mean I'm not going to call you. If, I, if I've seen you out there, I'm going, to, I'm going to still call you. But you really want to bullseye on a niche. And so, you know, if you're really targeting um, athletics, if you're targeting people that are boaters, if you're targeting people that are condos, all day long, don't worry about the people that don't go with you. You don't get more people by looking like everyone else. All you do is become a face in a crowd. Excellent question. Excellent stuff. Um, all right. How does Hootsuite compare to Snap or Buffer? Great, great question. So um, Hootsuite doesn't compare to – Snappa is a, a, just a graphic site. So Snappa, you don't actually post from Snappa. It's just where you can create your images and ads from Snappa. So Hootsuite is more like Buffer. Uh, the difference between them um, is Hootsuite is better for people who want to spend a lot of money, like ad agencies that want to spend a lot of money on getting really detailed reporting. Hootsuite's the, the the place for those people. For most of us entrepreneurs who are just looking to – easily post to like five different social media, don't want to spend a lot of money, we just want that one-click post, Buffer's the way to go. Um, you're, you, you'll just spend $15 a month. You don't need to spend money for all the additional reporting. Um, Hootsuite's too complicated for most, most advertisers um, that aren't looking to really do deep-level analytics. That's why I like Buffer. But if you're just using Facebook, Facebook has its own Buffer built in. You just go into your business page and click on um, – I'll show you how to do it. I'll show you how to do it real quick. So I'm just going to share my Facebook page here again. And then so I go here under the posts. Scroll to the bottom, see it says here, for, posting, for post scheduling and additional options, publishing tools. Click on publishing tools. 
and I can build my whole month of posts right here. It's taking a minute to load because I got 80 people on a Zoom. But see, I just create my posts here, just like you would in Buffer or Hootsuite, and I schedule it right here. I hit schedule, and I can schedule them. So I'll load up, like I told, like you said, I saw earlier, I do my church's social media, so I'm scheduled through the weekend. I spent an afternoon doing that. I don't have to think about it again. So I don't need buffer if I'm just on this. Now, if I want to do that on LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram, that's where buffer comes in. So, yeah. So to answer your question, yep. So if you want LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, then, then buffers save you a lot of time. All right. Another person says, um, you need people to come to your page and look forward to what you're going to post next. Um, yes. I think I understand. I'm trying to read fast. Sorry. Good. Well, I think I helped you guys. Um, you guys were excellent. Man, I could do this every other day right now. I would feel fantastic if we could have these. So I'll try to get some more stuff out soon. Um, Fun Girl Tammy asks, do you customize con? I can tell you to be a great social media advertiser already. Do you customize content depending on what you're using, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, that's actually the challenge is, you know, Listen, if your sales process is getting people to sign up for a consultation with you, you're going to get spend all this time. Um, and we're all so we're probably as well enamored with, with um, trying to have that celebrity thing. And so you spend all this time writing content for IG, for Twitter, uh, TikTok, you name it. But your conversions, unless you're converting from all those platforms, get one platform right. I mean, you know, you can share everything you post on Facebook and Instagram. So you just set that up automatically to do. Um, that's easy to do. But I would say, um, I would say you, just, you just start on the Facebook because most, most buyers and sellers are going to be there. IG, I'm not opposed to it, but it's going to be different content. They're going to be looking at pictures. So where I use IG is on your little quick IG videos. So when you're doing an open house, do an open house walkthrough, put that on IG and put that on Facebook. Okay, that's great. That's great engagement. Pictures of homes, uh, put that on IG, put that on Facebook. That type of content. Remember, people just want to scroll and see. Um, face, uh, IG is eye candy. Uh, Facebook, people have, are more likely to, to click and engage. Um, so videos on Facebook are great. Videos on IG are great. You can do both. IG posts, are, unless you are I, IG live, are only going to be 60 seconds, where Facebook, I can go as long as I want on my videos. All right. Good stuff, guys. Um, all right. We are at 345. I'm going to let you go. You all get follow-ups from me. Hope you don't mind a little bit of that. I am going to send you some stuff just to invite you to some more content that I think will be helpful for you. Love to get your feedback. Love you guys. Cannot wait until we are together again. I missed the interaction, and I didn't even allow you guys to unmute on this as much as I normally would in a webinar. I was just worried with having 130 registrations. We'd all be talking over each other. I'm going to have webinars coming up where you'll be able to talk more, share your screen, show me what you're doing. I'm going to try to have some Facebook Fridays coming up where you can uh, just show me what you're doing and I can give you some help. Um, happy to talk to you guys too. You can schedule on my website, but really can't wait till we're in person again. And I can look over your shoulder at your laptop and give you some advice. So um, great stuff. Thank you so much. Hope to see you guys on the next uh, trainings we got coming up at Pro or um, just through Stronghold Training. Really appreciate you guys. Take care.